Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Voice in the Hollow, the filmmaking journey in Unreal, where we document the entire process from very early stages to the final uh, final music mix, sound mix of an animated film. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> not entirely in Unreal Engine 5. Um, I'm your host, Miguel Ortega, and this is my co-host, Tran Ma. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for those that are already here. Jace, uh, Welcome. first from Jamaica. <laughs> we got James C. That's Davion. Annie, what's up? So, yeah, welcome back. And, um, yeah. So this week we got a bunch of stuff done. I'll start with some of the superficial stuff that we got done this week, which I think is pretty cool. Let me just pull this up. This well, this is not done at all, but just in progress. Um, designs for hey, the poster idea. So you could see starting to plan out how the poster is going to be. This is done by uh, your screen's not sharing. Oh. So this is done by a good friend of ours, Anatole, Isaac, Isaac Anatole. And um, he's an incredible artist, so he's been doing this. This is just like block-ins for what it would look like. Um, so there's that one, there's that one, and there's this one. Of course, this, these are just rough sketches, <laughs> so it's not yeah. like two well, uh, sick he, drawings running. He did design uh, our intro. Uh, title, which is really beautiful and nice looking. Yeah, so he designed the original logo, uh, our fonts, and I have a few of his pieces hanging in my house that he's done, which I've always really loved. Yeah, he's an artist artist. Yeah, but uh, I think we're going to go with this one, with the logo. It obviously won't be called, it won't say the voice blah blah, <laughs> but uh, I like this one. The only thing is we're going to have them uh, with their backs to each other. But yeah, so that's that. That's pretty cool. We got that this morning, so I'm showing that. Uh, this week, we're just trying to, to get to the end of the edit. Um, so I'm doing that, and then Tran is just basically going in and making every shot look better. Just fixing the lighting, giving it more punch, and rendering everything at 4K, even though we're going to degrade the crap out of everything and blur it and add grain and add scratches and make it look uh, crappier. We still want to render it at the highest quality and then degrade it. So yeah, yeah. So Tran, do you want to take uh, do you want to take over? Show some of your stuff. Uh, okay. I thought you wanted to show some some edit stuff, but I can. No, not yet. All right, cool. So um, basically, I've started from the beginning of our, our short, and then I've been relighting. Um, some some of it is not so bad, and some of it is a lot more work, but everything is rendering 4K and render times for one entire shot goes from 30 minutes to an hour now at, at that size, so, which is still really, really fast for us <laughs> because we used to get like, if we were lucky, we would get one hour frame um, in, you know, like a our, our traditional pipeline where we're actually rendering to one see. One hour frame would have been like, wow, this is a fast one. Yeah, one hour frame would have been like 30 minutes at one frame would have been like amazing. Um, but now we're getting whole shots in 30 minutes to an hour, which is still still way better. So I've I've gathered some stuff just to show the progression. Um, and the first stuff I'm going to show looks really rough. So this is when we started just using Unreal. So Unreal is a, a, is a new pipeline for us. And I keep saying that every stream just in case anyone is new. Uh, so when we started in Unreal, it was very hard to grasp a lot of stuff. Um, none of the stuff I'm going to say about lighting, I, th I think, I don't think I'm an expert, uh, but I think, you know, it works on an artistic level. So this is one of our first early shots, right? And we have all kinds of issues and problems uh, with it. Besides it looking hideous, yeah. Yeah, well, it looks really bad. Um, there, There's a depth of field problem right here where we have some plants and they are just going out of focus real bad um we've 
we fixed this by increasing the samples, but it's still really bad. So basically what we've done so far is just avoid putting really thin things in the foreground because they don't work out very well and they're not really worth the effort it would take to make it work. Uh, shot composition is not that interesting. We have black artifacts um, coming from lumen lighting on nanite surfaces. And then her, you know, facial expressions, animation is not there. And then this is like kind of the thing that I try to avoid uh, whenever I talk about lighting. Like we get, like, I keep mentioning it. Um, and I thought maybe this is a, a good example. But basically, you know, all the shadows turn really dark like this. And it just gets really crunchy. Um, and the lighting looks crunchy. It doesn't look soft. It doesn't look nice. And uh, when, when we're first lighting or any shot, I'm lighting any shot, even now, the first look I get is something like this. And it's really, it's hard to get away from it. Um, but what I want, what I really realize what I want is to avoid all this like black deep shadows, which is um, unusual for us because a lot of our shadows in our previous work, uh, if you see the intro, go real dark. But in Unreal, it just looks nasty and they look, it looks crunchy, it doesn't look soft and nice. So I've been trying to avoid that. So that's like our first shot progression. And in the story, this is when she first sees uh, this cave pit. So this is her, her moment where like, oh, I'm seeing something, right? So you're seeing her reaction. This is our second pass. We still have um, some bad depth of field. She doesn't have her clothes on here, but you can see that bad artifact. Um, it's a little bit better, but it's- yeah, we, were we were getting happy at this stage. Yeah, because the first one was so terrible. Yeah. Um, and that's a really dangerous thing to kind of go, oh, Settle. that that looks good, but it only looks good because everything else <laughs> looks so bad, right? Um, it's not that we're trying to settle. You're, we're just like, you, you just get blind. Um, that's what it is. You lose sight of it because you know, you're starting so low from such a low point. Uh, we still have like really crunchy shadows and it's not as bad. It's a little bit softer, like the transition from the, the cheek here, but it's still not, I still don't think it looks good, right? So let's look at some more progression. So at this stage here, and then, and then in this we had um, ideas for trees and stuff like that. Okay, so here the lighting is a little bit better. Um, I put some like light functions, like a, a texture, just to get the breakup in light so it looked a little bit more natural, but it's still not there, right? It's kind of clipping out really dark and it doesn't look very pretty. And if you look at the set, um, this is when we were trying to do stylized trees, which I, I ditched it because I just said this is not gonna work. So it's a lot of, Things not looking very nice. Um, the vines back here look kind of gross and, and crappy. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, eventually kind of realized like, let's just change the, the shot, right? Um, so here's another stage. This one's in the trailer. Uh, we cropped up closer. This is when we changed the art direction and we ditched the trees and we changed our palette. So from, from here, it's like teal and red. And we just went a little bit closer and it looks much nicer. Um, we crop into this a little bit more. And then here, it, we still went back and fixed it. I, um, I comment on her surprise face. It looks kind of strange. And so we had an animator come in. And I just re-rendered this. And the expression is still shock, but not... Uh, not as dramatic as that. Okay, and then let's look at some, I'll show you some other shots. So anytime you see this background, it's when we didn't have the art direction. So this was also our first lighting. Um, this is when she was approaching this pit, this, this hole in the ground, and still working out why our lighting looks terrible, right? Really crunchy, dark and overly lit and no sense of palette. Um, 
And then this pass was really interesting. I think I start figuring out something here. So here, this is the shadows aren't as deep. And when I saw this, I go, oh, look, it doesn't look so bad. <laughs> uh, the lighting doesn't have a lot of contrast. We, we want punchier lighting. That's the thing that's kind of hard. Um, I noticed that when things are like overcast lighting or e more evenly lit or brighter, um, everything looks a little bit better. So maybe the image as a whole doesn't have that punch. Um, but I don't have like um, nasty, crunchy shadows, right? Like it just feels like it's filled in well, right? So then, you know, I'm seeing all like this detail on here. And and normally I, I never have to think about these things because, you know, when we use V-Ray, you just put a light and if it's dark, it's just going to look good. So there's where I'm noticing the big difference. Um, so here, once I start realizing you can't go that dark, um, we, we do have this pass here where we tried to fill it in a little bit more. Right, it looks better. But I still wanted to. So this is like what, like the seventh? Uh, yeah, so I, I'm only showing point. you four, but no, it's like 12. Yeah. Right, so this one is the latest one which is not too much different. It just has more um, fill in the shadow. So the face, you know, just the way light wraps around the form looks a little bit better. And again, in, in like a, a renderer, you, you just get that stuff for free. You don't have to think about it. In Unreal, you got to light it to feel like light is wrapping around. <laughs> um, and you can get the look, but you just have to know what you're looking for, which is kind of really hard because we've just been getting that for free for so many years. And now I'm like, well, what does it do? Um, how do I mimic that? And I don't have like a reference point for it. So I just have to move lights around until it looks better. Um, here's one of our earlier ones too. This is kind of more previous stage. You can see we, we don't have the color palette. Um, we have like a lot of black artifact. Oh, this one's terrifying. Yeah, we didn't know how to fix this. Uh, so that comes from nanite meshes. Um, using Lumen, and we turned off uh, double-sided shadows on geometry, and, and that fixes it. You get a lot of light leaks now, though, but you cover it up. So this is the original one here. Um, muddier and stuff. And then you can see how dark, how dark it is um, around here. We were not over-lighting. Um, I would say now a lot of my images are really bright. And then we decide that shot sucks. Then we try to do this one, which I, I still don't mind it so much. It's one of my favorites of the old ones. That we yeah, so this about. is one of the better ones for our original art direction. Um, but it's like, you know, maybe one or two shots that look, look okay. Uh, and then when we change the art direction, Right now you can see our, our palette is more, more teal and red. So this is one progression. So there's a shot where she's walking around looking for something. That's what it is in the story. So these are, even though they look completely different, the purpose in the story, they're the same. It's the we same just, shot. Yeah, we just don't have to look. Uh, then we decided how to make that more interesting. Um, start punching up the lighting and adding a little bit more swirls in the dirt. Okay, so it's getting a little bit better. And then this is where it's now. We still have depth of field problems. Um, we'll fix certain shots, but we just don't want to fix every single shot. So this one has geysers, it's more red. Um, it's just more punchy. So. That's what I've been doing. Here's another shot here. Some of the shots are, are not too difficult. Um, and again, some a lot of work. So this is a point in the story where she's going in a trance um, and she's around this evil hole. And it might be hard to see, but there's a tree right here, right? But this is really important and we're not seeing it a lot. She there's, She's right here and she's also kind of um, fading out a little bit, 
I just play that shot again. I mean, I think if you look carefully, you can see her, right? That's not really what we want to do, though. I want to make it clear. So I came back and relit it. Um, I just had more light. So I decided the palette for this. Well, it's primarily like a red and like blue blue. It's not teal, right? It's uh, Mario Bava's colors. Have you ever seen his movies? And um, I added yellow because I, th I think it needed it. Right, so I had a hard time pulling her out. What I did is I added another color, um, rounding it out to primary colors by adding yellow. And yellow kind of makes sense because fires, you know, the color of fire can be, you have whites in it, you have yellow and you have orange and red. Um, so I took the yellow and started hitting her with that, which pulls her out more. And then it picks up some extra details on the side so you can see the shape. Um, and then what I also did was I added blue light all around here. So that kind of left me with like, um, like a blue ring around the landscape, right? So it's like a donut, a blue color, which, you know, looks good next to red because it makes it pop out, right? Um, and then what I also did was add a lot of like extra fog. So when I add the fog, um, I try to put it behind a tree that pulls out the tree more so we can see these horn shapes and this tree shape. So I think that looks better. And these are kind of fun to light because they don't have to look real. Or look, they're just so stylized. They can be really abstract. So that helps make it pop a little bit more. Um, I'll show you some other stuff. So this shot took a while, it's really long um, in terms of the frame, number of frames. And it had, had to do a lot of troubleshooting on this one, on some of the Niagara stuff. And We're still uh, having issues with it. Yeah, but I think I, I, I actually fixed it, figured it out. The black stuff too? Yeah. So let's play, this is like our first, this is later on. Um, this is a different set, it's a ceremony. So we made the ceremony after our initial first stuff and again our initial first stuff was like this crap right this crap that crap <laughs> um and then we're just like learning how to use the tool as we go so that's why the first stuff is is really terrible um and then this is our second set where it's different lighting scenario and you i we feel like this kind of stuff better yeah we we also light this type of stuff better it is really it does go dark um and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, but it never, characters don't ever really go black. So they're in shadow, but they still have light on them. So it is more like what you would see, like a, if you watch like any animated film, it's never really that dark. I think it's because it's for kids. But for us, it's not that, that reason. It's just because it looks bad. But yeah, so we light interior sets a lot more nicer. Um, and we also were just getting better <laughs> at figuring out how to do this stuff. Uh, and then you can see it still has a lot of lot of issues here, but it's you know a much better first look than what we were showing before. Um, here, you know, this is where it was at a couple of days ago. I'll just play. So the lighting, um, what I've done here is I I punched up the color so it's less muddy. I've added um, more height fog, so there's more, just more fog, right, um, inside Unreal. And then I have, you know, a lot of, like, uh, extra smoke. This is one of the few sets where you can just put smoke everywhere, and it looks cool, and it makes sense. Um, so there's just, like, fog cards and, and elements all over the place. We also have extras up here and a, a whole crowd here. So this shot takes a long time to render. Um, these extras are all Alembic files and it's super slow when you have an Alembic file and we have more than one. Um, we have like a ton in the crowd and, and then the main characters. Now, the issue that I was troubleshooting were these um, black artifacts. If you look here, you can see. Um, and then I realized what that is, is the heat distortion. So I didn't make these, I bought them on Marketplace. They are um, from Action VFX. 
No, Ricardo, just add fog doesn't work. It actually tends to make stuff uglier. <laughs> so, fog, um, fog, you need it, but it doesn't fix everything. If you have too much, it makes this shot look bad. So it's actually really tricky. Um, this is coming from heat distortion. So in this fire pack, uh, there's heat distortion where it warps the image. And the reason why it's picking up black is it's basically trying to warp um, this horn, right? And it's just kind of fluttering out like this. So what I did or what I started doing was I just tried to open it up, right? So I'll show an Unreal. Give me one second. Let's go over here. Um, we've been, for this pack here, um, all this stuff is a blueprint. But what I did is I went into where the, let's see here, um, the Niagara system, I duplicated it. And I copy that, because I don't want to mess up my original. Definitely don't mess up the original. I copied it into here. So let me just do a new one real quick. Because um, I don't want to ruin that one. Because I have it in an actual shot. Let's do fire medium. Well, no, let's do fire large. And I'm going to copy that. You can see I have a hard time organizing too. Uh, let's just drop it in here. I'm gonna copy it. Take a moment. I'll delete this later. So I'm just trying to put it in place that so doesn't mess up other stuff. So what I do it start doing was just opening up this stuff, trying to figure it out. Um, and I bought a couple other packs to, uh, I would like to get more or learn more about Niagara. It's not what I'm really thinking about right now. Right now I'm just thinking about getting the shots and the lighting to look good. Um, but here you can see there's heat distortion. So basically I just went in through all the parts that were problematic and then I just shut them off and then I, I saved it right um, which helps me so that fixed that problem and as soon as I did that I just did a render last night here um, you can see that it's no longer warping around right so it looks much better. Let's see some of the comments. Yeah, the fire looks really nice. Uh, if you look at not last week's streams, I think the week before, we actually had um, the person who made the fire pack uh, on our stream and talk about it. It was a really nice stream, so I recommend it. Um, I didn't say much anything. It's it's all what he does. So if you're interested in a little bit in Niagara, you should look at like maybe a couple streams ago. Um, that was a really nice one. And he really knows his stuff. Uh, I think this fire pack is probably the best looking one. Fire is really hard to get look good. Uh, let's see. I was there for the twist initial story. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I think that it's gone, which is a relief because there's so many little issues. Um, and they're like brand new issues for us because who thought about having a blueprint fire uh, having issues and you know again that's totally brand new I show some other progression of shots so in this story um, Koa our main character gets up and storms out so you can see here um, it's a pretty cool shot as far as like uh, the edit and she has how, no clothes here of course yeah she's so <laughs> close how she how she moves um, through it, I think it's a nice looking shot. The lighting is, is not there. Um, where it was at before I started coming back to it in this pass, you see here, she has clothes. Uh, what I did is put a ton of candles behind her because they look cool when they go out of focus. So you can see where we have all these like um, lights back here. 
and they're all candles. And um, I punched up like a blue rim light, so you could see that. And then just the lighting is a, it's more saturated, it's a little bit more dramatic. You know, now that looks much more exciting. Let's see a couple other shots here. Again, they didn't look as bad as uh, the stuff in the desert. Yeah, she doesn't have clothes. But, you know, they just look like dolls. So this is our first look. And now we're, this is where it's at. It's got candles. There's a dude standing behind her. Um, just so it looks like she's not by herself. The lighting is more dramatic on her face. And she has um, kind of like a blue light on hitting this side. She's got a couple lights. She has two rim lights, one orange and one blue. Um, and then she has kind of a fill that's blue that's picking up these little highlights. And it's really subtle, but you need it because if you don't have it, the face is going to go real flat. And then she has um, a main light. So she has four lights hitting her face. Um, the main light has a flickering effect, which I'll play. So it looks like fire flickering. And then we also have... Um, animation changes on it, right? So we had an animator come in. And then if I just go back here. Um, there's a couple of things in her design that I kind of, if you have an opportunity to see, I'd, I'd like to see. Um, one of them is her teeth. Like she has like, um, at least the intention was to design it in a way where she looks cute, and so she has like kind of gappy teeth, right? Um, at least I think they're supposed to be cute. And you don't see it always. So on here, you know, I kind of lit it in a way where you could see it. You know, just adding, giving her some character. Let's see this one here. So this one has a, a different performance. Um, the lighting has changed. And this one has um, some um, additional hand animation for the face. It's subtle, but kind of neat it. Um, we have candles in the back. It gives it more punch. It's more saturated. And then I have um, some nice little rim light back here. Uh, basically, I just want to see complexity. Um, I like it when... I'm lighting and I'm seeing like all this like little spec lights hits. I think it looks good or interesting. So it's new animation and adjusted lighting. Okay, what else here? Oh, okay, let me show this one. So this is one of our shots before. Uh, again, it doesn't look so bad because we got better at lighting as we were going. And just this one here, just to make it more dramatic. So again, any because uh, there's not a lot of chances to just put smoke everywhere, it makes sense in this scene. So I want to put as much fire. Um, I like the candles. I added a lot of smoke. It doesn't make sense why smoke's coming from the hole, like from the ground, but it, eh, it works, right? Just gives more imagination. Um, and then as she's walking out, she has like these sparks, you know, kind of bursting. Um, it's just giving it increased c complexity. And then the lighting up here is more even, whereas in the old one, it's kind of like strange um, ray. And I don't know why. It doesn't make sense compositionally uh, because she's right here. So it would make sense if that was coming down here or something. But it doesn't make sense that we have a ray here and then this center of interest here. Um, I did try to put a light here to make it brighter, but it kind of blew out the details. Uh, and I kind of like seeing the chandelier. So I just pushed it back. Plus, it's really too distracting anyway. So it's still here. Some of this, again, will be cropped out because our framing is really you know, more like this. 
that's her frame. But still, you know, it's a little bit um, more focused, I think. You know, and we'll probably come back and, and readjust uh, more stuff as we go. So uh, I did a bunch more shots than this. Um, I'm at a good state where I'm, I'm catching up to Miguel. Uh, so I'll show where that is. Sometimes um, these maps can take a moment to load, even though I just loaded it because uh, it's different maps. Give me one second. So this would be the murder. Um, I have a bunch of stuff to do. These are shots I haven't gone through yet. Uh, and it's kind of um, overwhelming. So this is a shot that I was working on yesterday. Um, when, when I get to like, this is a new sequence where there's a confrontation. Um, we're revisiting this, this set for the second time. So in our story, you do see this for the first time. Um, and the lighting is similar. I, I just added a lot more atmosphere to, to make it, I don't know, moodier, right? So if I play the shot. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, if you've been following along, you may know this is a messed up story at this point. But she gets impaled. Uh, one of the sisters gets impaled. Um, there's no clotsim. There's no shot mauling on any of these characters. So they're not blowing right now. Um, I'll come back and do that later. I think it'll look nicer. But what I did here was I added, well, I basically purchased on, on the marketplace um, some different kind of wind elements. And let me just turn them off so you can see what it looks like without, without it. Let me put this over here. So now I have all this additional smoke. Uh, I like the, how these look, right? So here's one where it's just gusting. Uh, and then I started replacing them in the back next to the tree because they have uh, nicer movement. Right, it gives it like that nice dusty look. Uh, and then I have some fog or more smoke shooting from underneath. So there's very subtle movement, which you probably won't see in this shot because I have a big wind blowing in the foreground, but you'll see it in other shots. So I put more here. And so I'm just building uh, layers of this stuff. Now, what I did do um, behind her, let's see, should be here, or maybe I can't find it. Um, I have fog right here, placed right behind her. Uh, I just don't know where it is. It's somewhere, somewhere else in my out, outliner. And what that is is just making it slightly brighter behind her because she doesn't read. So by placing some atmosphere, it's just a lighter smoke that's gonna, you're gonna see her silhouette a little bit better. And then now I have the, the foreground smoke coming in. Uh, there's also some ground stuff. So I have this one in the foreground. These are background. It's probably this one here. So there's a little bit of smoke. Um, you can see it a little bit. Uh, it's just hitting the floor. It's just kind of like dust kicking up. It's really subtle. And I went in and I edited all that stuff. So it's a lot of layers. Um, this one's the most dramatic. And the smoke pack that I got is it's really nice. It's called Realistic Starter VFX Pack. It has a bunch of stuff um, other than smoke in it. 
uh, probably not going to use most of it. Like there's blood destruction or, or whatever, but you know, or like muzzle flashes, which we don't have guns or anything like that in our story. So basically um, I started using these and sometimes they come on a little bit too strong. So let me just grab something here. Let me just dump this somewhere because I don't want to screw this up because if I accidentally save, I destroyed this. So I just want to duplicate it. Okay, let's put it in whole. Now it's murder under death here. Okay. So if I ruin this, um, I won't mess it up. So I got this pack like this, and there's a there's a couple of things that I'm changing, and one of them is um, the warm up time. So if you take in most of these here, like if you take a look here at the beginning of this sequence, so this is like my player, uh, there is no smoke, right? And if you just throw it in as default in your shot, uh, your initial frames for your shot, which might only be for us like a couple of seconds, uh, will have nothing. So what I've done is I just try to warm it up. So again, I didn't make this, but I don't think you have to know a lot to, to edit this. So I went to the, like the system and then down here um, under this one, you have a warm up time. So, you know, I know the font probably looks really tiny, uh, but it says warm up and you can add the number of seconds. So I've added like four seconds to it. So if I say four, you can see now the state that it starts, it, starts in, it's going to be full blown out smoke. Um, and then what I also did was, if you look here, there's two separate elements, right? So you can see there's like a node for each one. And I wanted to kind of control it a little bit more because it, by default, when I, when I put it in, let me just put it in. Let's turn off this one here. Let's drop this one. It might take a second. Oh, it actually doesn't look so bad. Uh, it did to me, though. But I have it somewhere far away. Okay, there it is. It didn't look bad. Um, but I think that it kind of overwhelms the, the camera a little bit. So I wanted just this extra control in dealing with the opacity. So what I did here, let's turn that off. So I only have this one here. Is that I changed the material here. I also wanted to color it. So under here you have a sprite render and that's where the material is signed. So under my regular smoke, um, under renderer, I can see my material slot. And then for the second one, I also have a separate material. Um, what I did is I just duplicated that material. I mean, I think this stuff is handy. Um, so I duplicated it. And then I added uh, in the main one, an ability to adjust the color. Let's actually just look. So these materials are, are pretty simple. They're not so complicated, um, which makes it easier to edit. Uh, the ones from Action VFX Pro are much more complex and more difficult. What I did is I added a, a step back. You can see the material is very simple. I just have a base color. And then um, we have an opacity control here. I added this extra color node. My default is white, which means no effect. And then I added um, this material parameter, which allows me to actually control um, the fog opacity in my sequencer. And I talked about this like last week. So basically, if you create material parameter collection, you can drop it into um, your node and it won't, you know, 
depending on your default, it won't do anything. But what I can do now is if I go in my sequencer, I drop the same material parameter. And now I have um, an opacity controller. So basically, I can use this to kind of key um, certain effects. Right, let me just turn smoke seven off. Um, I'm not going to hit delete because when I hit delete, it um, freezes up my computer. And let's see here, when she falls down, just maybe as an example, um, notice here she has like some dust kind of shooting out and it's, it's layered. Uh, Miguel did one where it's a little bit more red and then I added one. And what I do for it is just control the opacity through this, which is different. Um, you can do a couple of things but it won't really fade the way I want it to. So, you know, if I come in here and I bring this smoke and I place this down here, um, and you can do this by default, I can add a Niagara component. And then here I can add um, a life cycle track, right? So this smoke will not be active until it hits this frame, right? So where you see it's red. So if I have this in the beginning of my sequence, and the beginning of my sequence is a, you know, this green line, and the end is this red line, right? Um, if I say, I don't want it to start until here, you won't see the smoke active. Um, and it's nice, the problem is it just kind of turns on, right? So I'm kind of using a combination of, okay, turn on here, but um, if I go to my, parameter, I have uh, a fade, a way to fade it in and out. So it's just using both where I'm fading the fog in and turning it on when it hits certain frames. Let's see. Uh, all these shots look amazing. Great work. Thanks, Ty. Uh, and I remember JD Smith digital artist in, in the very beginning, <laughs> in our first streams. Um, thank you for the, the compliment. Um, it's hard to show your your ugly shit, but um, and then when we started this, we kind of knew it was it was probably gonna look like crap, <laughs> and we were gonna have to show everyone like the crap stuff. Um, but we it was within our expectations. When you're learning anything new, it tends to look like shit. You just have to try to get through it. Anyway, this is the look of my death area, like just have wind, let's just make it dramatic. Um, so it's a little bit different, right? And what I've been doing, well, let's just take a look at this map. Let's break down the lighting. So I'll turn off my smoke effects. And my lighting is um, directional light, I have fog and I have a, an HDRI and a post-process. So that is contributing um, pretty much lighting for my scene. Um, HDRIs, I, I kind of hate them, but I like them. You hate them in, in, in uh, Unreal. Yes, I hate them in Unreal because they break. Um, like if your lighting breaks, if you're, if you're doing this enough, you're gonna, and you're trying to do shots and you're doing iterations, you're gonna break your light at some point. It's just bound to happen. Uh, it's inevitable, but I still like them because they give me um, nicer fill light than if I just use um, Unreal like Skylight, right? So you could, you know, there are a couple options for us, right? So for some shots, we're creating the atmosphere, the sky atmosphere, and the clouds, and um, along with Skylight, and then that could work, and that replaces the HDRI. I just don't think it looks as nice. When, it's, when we're looking for that subtle lighting. So that's why we're using that. Um, but there's a huge kind of hate relationship I have with it because it breaks. Um, all the time. All the time. If I turn off my post-process, it looks really lifted. And, you know, and again, I talk about this in previous streams. Um, in our old stuff, what's going wrong with it, like say, for example, this, this shot here, um, 
is we're not really light over lighting as much. And we're just like, why do you have to over light? Um, you'd have to, because you get these really nasty, crunchy, dark shadows, right? So we're seeing it here and we're seeing it here, um, particularly on the character, right? She looks really terrible. Uh, so the shadows are getting really flat and, and gross uh, all around her. And by making it lighter, you can see I don't have um, nasty shadows on her. She's in shadow, but she has like uh, data in here. So if you look carefully in the shot, like you can see like information on the form. You can see like a little bit of her braid if, if you look very closely. Um, and and you have to do that if you want to avoid that. Like if you look at this one, um, it just is like very flat. There's no, there's no like little bits of form being picked up. So I have to make it brighter. And then my post process is punching it back down. Um, it, and I don't have as nasty shadow. So, you know, there's, that's where I'm getting a lot of that problem. Um, the HDI is huge because, you know, without it, let's turn this off. So this is just black, right? And I have um, fog cards. The fog cards are missive. That's why they are glowing. Um, I have my directional light. I have my fog and then my H dry just gives it this, this extra fill that it really needs. Um, if I don't have my post process on, you will notice a bigger difference. So you can see here, uh, without the H dry lighting, it just crunches. And then when I have that on, it just gives me, um, a nice softer fill effect. So this is the lighting for this shot and my H dry is not too bright, right? It's um, less than one intensity. Um, and of course, the brightness also is affected by the actual map that we're using. Uh, but I've set this one a little bit lower. Now, I notice when I, you know, in the next part of the sequence, I have um, a lot of close-up shots. And I actually switch the map out because I need to adjust the HDRI to get the light to fill more. So let me just show what that means. I'm gonna not save anything. Okay, so let's take a look at this shot here. Okay, so this one um, is rough. There's no facial performance, which makes it hard for me to light too because uh, her face is dead, right? And there's no shot modeling or cloth simulation on her. Um, but I decided we decided we should just start lighting. So after she falls down, when the arrow hits her, she runs over to, to check up on her. And this has a different map because my HDRI is much brighter. Um, if I ever need to adjust my HDRI, it has to be a new map uh, because that stuff doesn't record in sequencer. So if I bring this in, like in the sequencer and I make adjustments, um, it permanently adjusts the whole map. Um, it took us a while to figure that out. So it does not work in the sequencer, right? And here, let me just show what it, um, you can see how bright it is. It's intensely bright. And let me turn off all the smoke. I have a bunch of smoke. Here we are. Um, so here, the H dry is super bright. This one's at value of three, the other one was 0.6. Um, I need this to be brighter because you can see how this is filling in the form. Um, ignore how the shoulders are collapsed. <laughs> I try to ignore it. Um, it's hard for me to ignore it, but I try to because if, you know, when something looks bad, it, it just looks bad. Um, but notice here, like, she doesn't go, she doesn't lose any data, right? So there's always information in all the shadow areas on her face um, on both characters. And again, I need that to avoid uh, this horrendous look here where it's all really black. And then what I do is I, I know that I need um, the direction of light and I need the atmosphere. And it's really bright. Um, 
but my post process is bringing it back down. So if you look at this shot or the previous shot, they visually look consistent. Um, they're similar, just the H dry is filling in much more. Um, and then on top of this, I have a bunch of spotlights here. And you can see that they're basically meant to fill in the form. So, you know, it never goes dark like this. So if you if you see this here and you take a look at her face, um, it just looks kind of flat and gross. Let's see if I can get up closer on this one here. So I, I try to avoid this because it, it never looks nice, right? Um, in Unreal, I find, at least for the short, I need to give it that extra fill light, right? So I have a, a couple lights hitting her. Let's just take a look here. I have a ton of lights here, <laughs> not a couple. It's because she's running. So we have this first light here, which gives her a little bit of the light on her forehead. So let me turn that on and off. Right, it's meant to be subtle, but it fills it in. Let's turn that off. Uh, I'm not sure what that light does. You can see there's so many lights, it's tricky for me. Um, but basically, they're all meant to just be like this kind of cool color that's hitting the top of her forehead. Uh, why is it hit the top? Because it kind of makes sense. So none of this I feel is like very accurate. Um, what my thinking is when I'm doing this is I'm thinking, well, I know I can't do this because the face looks flat, right? Um, and I need some kind of fill. So my options when I'm looking at this are, well, you know, I could hit the light from this side and this side of the face and it could fill it in. The problem is if I start filling it in from the side, it should just look like she's not in shadow anymore, right? She becomes too bright. Um, it might make sense from the top because sun's coming from above. So that was my kind of thought process. It's really just fake crap. So, uh, and you can see, you know, she doesn't, she's in shadow, but she's never losing information. And then to top it off, I just throw in um, some fog. And this one here, I colored the material on it to be much more orangey, just to give that extra punch in color. Let me look at some of the questions. Um, Love how creepy and toxic the shot feels. Yeah, it's supposed to be <laughs> kind of, it's green. So the sky sky in this um, location is always a little bit more green um, just because it looks grosser. And then another question, is the breaking a bug in Unreal or just Epic have reason? I think it's just a bug. It's like clearly looks like a bug. Um, it's not just the HDRI, it's the HDRI. Skylight and and the the environmental fog together it keeps breaking the fog yeah that's what it seems like it's doing to me yeah it's um it just gets unbalanced so what happens if we try increasing global illumination um well you you can increase increase the bounce right you know you can go to the skylight here and you can increase the intensity, which will make um, the fill a little bit brighter. It works fine, and I do that for certain shots. You just um, can't change it in the sequencer, right? Because it doesn't work in the sequencer. Uh, but you can fill in like your intensity in your skylight, and that could work. I've kept it like this, uh, and what I've done instead was just make the H drive stronger. So again. If you take a look, you know, my HDRI here is off and I just have um, a couple lights hitting her. And those are fog cards back here, but I don't really have any environment light. And the HDRI is, I'm basically using it as GI. Um, I'm not really using it as a directional light source. It's giving me some sky back here, which I need. And it's making the, it bright, 
but it's also giving me a lot of fill. So if I turn off my post process, so this is what everything looks like. You know, again, I have these lights. Let's turn them off here. And then my HDR is basically my, I'm treating it like GI. Um, I actually don't think I treat most of the HDR as a directional light where it's like, to me, I don't even know where the sun is. <laughs> On the HDR, um, what I mean is you couldn't use the HDR. HDRs tend to have suns in them somewhere because it's the sky, right? And you could, you know, use the light source from the HDR, like, you know, aim the sun. You know, I could rotate it, look for the sun and have the sun back here and light it. But I'm not really doing that. What I'm doing, again, is just getting really even light uh, uh, because I need it to avoid the nasty shadow. So now you can see she looks kind of even. And then I have fog because I have to have it. And then we have our directional light. Um, and then I have my post process on at the same time. Even with this, though, it's still getting kind of crunchy. So crunchy like up here. Um, it's really bright here. So I have these lights, just filling them in. So it's less crunchy, right? And that, that's just my process. So all my close-up shots will have um, different strength at HDI, which will be one map. And then my wide shots will um, be a little bit less filled, so it goes a little bit darker, which is not a big deal for the faces when they're far away. Let's see, question. Um, any suggestion? For camera animation? I don't know, that's a Miguel question. What is the what is the question? Any suggestion for camera camera animation? That's a very uh, that's a very, very broad, broad question. Qu yeah. Well you can talk about like virtue cam, so or something like that. Uh, that could be really helpful. So yeah, so this is what I'm doing here. And you want to show anything? Yeah, I could show camera animation, which is what I'm doing. So. Okay. Let's give him a second. So here I have, um, can you see my screen? Yeah. So I'm working on this shot. This is not the final animation, but it's when they fall into the hole. So usually when I when I'm starting a shot like this, like this is more than just one shot. This is going to be probably going to cut this into like two or three shots to extend, to make it seem like it's a little bit longer than it actually is. Um, and that's something that, that is done in live action as well. So first I'm, tr I'm trying to find my wide angle, which this one I kind of like. Uh, the only thing is maybe at the end, um, I want her to be a little bit more in shot, Koa down here. But it's a tough one because I want both of them to be in shot, so maybe something like that. And for this, I'm just setting two, two keyframes for now, just one in the beginning, and then I'm just doing a rotation down. And I know that at this point, I'll probably cut uh, into, into the shot because uh, I wouldn't want to keep it that long. I'd probably cut into it before, but this is probably like my wide angle. And I do like it. I think it's pretty cool. So I'm trying to just find angles that I like. So here's another one that I like a lot. Uh, again, it makes me realize that some of the animation needs to be fixed. Like there's some uh, lack of uh, weight on the butt. You could see the way it sits on the vines. But this is older animation, so I'm not that worried about that. I think the new one maybe addresses that, those things. The other thing is there's some areas where the tension um, on the vines we, we weren't crazy about. But again, this is older. Um, but I know the, the general move and timing is the same, so I'm not worried about it. The, the animation just keeps getting updated. But I like this shot here. Uh, let's look at some other ones here. So this one's kind of similar. You're just kind of following her down a little bit more, a little bit wider. So since we already did one that's similar to this, let's try this 
with a longer lens. So it's the same shot. I'm just pulling the focal length to like 80. I think that looks nice. One thing that tends to look nice and un unreal is if you have a, a longer lens. Um, yeah. Really wide shots tend to look more gamey. Yeah, and I always like to to use long lenses. So long lenses meaning like 50 and up. So I'm just going in now and just uh, jumping in between my keys and just using the rotation. So not the translation, just the rotation at this point. I already did the translation just to make sure uh, the framing is ideal. And I sometimes want the framing to not be perfect to add to the chaos, make it seem like the camera person is uh, not a machine. Yeah, we want trying to int introduce like imperfections. Yeah. So. so just rotating this, just adding keys. That red on her really pops out nicely. Yeah, this set is not so bad because <laughs> we built it at the end. It's one of our last sets. It is the last set, I think. Yeah. And so it was like, oh, okay, uh, I get what I can do and can't do in here. So what I'll probably do also, and this is something that I usually hate, but I'm going to do a crash zoom. So I'm going to find the spot like right here. And then I'm going to just go to my um, focal length and I'll set a keyframe. And then I'm going to go a few frames back like this. And I'll set my focal length to be very wide, which again is something I usually hate. So what is that right there? How wide? How wide is that? It's not wide enough because as it, as it goes. Or can too you wide, read out the numbers? Like thirty-four. Yeah. Okay. So you see what thirty-four looks like, and then how? What does it uh, transition to? So like seventy-five. Which really, I should just do seventy. So let's go to 75 here. And actually what I'll probably do is I'll go a little bit over. Crash, crash zooms are, are what, like uh, shot, like is it style in like the 70s? 60s and 70s. Like you see it a lot in like spaghetti westerns and uh, like horror movies. So, so, so what I did here is I went a little bit over. So I went to 77 and then really quickly went back to 75. So it has like a bounce. So that it feels like the guy missed his mark and then tried to fix it. So let's see how that looks. So you see it just gives it some action. like. Yeah, and there, there's no motion blur that you guys can see right now. Um, it does feel different when you render it because you'll see uh, the blur in the frames. It'll be even more dramatic. Yeah, I definitely like that crash zoom. So since we're going with that older style aesthetic, um, crash zooms and stuff like that are definitely something that I want to add. Yeah, because we are our our color palette is is actually influenced by the '70s, and then our the look of the grain is definitely from the '60s '70s era too. So these two, I like, I like them, but they're they're kind of very similar. So I want to try to find another one. So this is another one here that's just more abstract. I'm gonna save it, but I probably won't use it. But let's add keyframes to that. So um, I'll go to the first frame. Now add a keyframe, go to the last frame, I'm going to add a keyframe, and then here let's push out or push in, no it's pushing out, I'm pushing into the hole but pushing out is the right terminology so then we can do something like that. Again I might not use this but I want to have it in case. Also, see what happens if I pull the 
the length to make it a little bit wider. Oh, that looks cool. Um, only thing is that you can see that the vines don't connect to anything. Yeah, Ala is just floating in the air. <laughs> yeah. But it is kind of nice to see the hole, though, like uh, like how bright how bright it is, and then the surrounding walls look nice. Yeah. So that that one we might eat. We might use this for a completely different shot where we could art direct the vines, not one that's already animated. So that's okay. I'll save it and we have it. Here's another one. That's comment. The flare is making it awesome. Yeah. Like the bloom, um, blown out lighting. So let's do some more chaotic uh, shots here. So I'm going to create a new camera. And this one I want to follow Allah. So let's just come over here. She should be wearing her mask, which she's not at the moment. Yeah, this is after she's been stabbed in the face with <laughs> the sphere. So the sphere in her face is not there right now. So first thing I'll do, I'll usually set the aperture to one, which you usually don't want to do in uh, live action because you'll get a very crazy shallow depth of field, which looks really beautiful. So why is it a problem? The problem is your circle, your, your area of focus becomes so, so small, so, so tiny that it almost becomes impossible for the focus puller to keep the, the shot in focus. So that's okay because it's digital and I really like the shallow depth of field. It really makes things look a little bit smaller. It works well for this. Yeah, because it makes them look like dolls, which I kind of like that. So I also want to set my focal length to around 50. My favorite focal length is 80, but this might be too uh, zoomed in for the shot. So let's go to like this. That looks kind of cool. This one won't be too hard to, <laughs> to fix. Okay, and then let's go down here. Oh, that's nice. Keep her face in there. So now I'm adding keyframes and moving forward a little bit, moving it down, not rotating it too much, adding keyframes. So usually I'll start with the first frame and the last frame where I want it to start and where I want it to end. But if I want a chaotic camera move, I don't want to do that. I want to just go in this linear fashion, which will make the camera movement much jerkier is exactly what I want. So then I just keep moving forward. Bring this down. Add a keyframe. And I'm not adding keyframes to my uh, focus distance, which is stupid of me. So let's do that here. I was adjusting it, but not adding keyframes. So not good. It's very pretty right there. Yeah. I wonder how it's going to look with the, the mask. It's a, That looks nice, too. They look kind of pretty, considering what this is. <laughs> There's a photograph of this woman that killed herself, I think, from the Empire State Building. And she landed in a, on top of a like beautiful 1920s car. It's an old black and white photograph. And she landed beautifully. Like she looks like an angel and the dent in the car almost looks like wings. And she just landed in this very photogenic pose. It's horrible. It's a horrible photo. And I guess it part, part of it works is because it's black and white or else you probably would see that it's very disgusting. Yeah. There's probably blood everywhere. But she was clearly a very pretty woman. And the, the, the photograph is very famous for... Um, I think the literal title of the photo is the most beautiful S word. Yeah. Oh, you found it? <laughs> well, I think I didn't see it. That's one of our, our, our audience members. Yeah, so. Which is horrible. Yeah. She won't look as, as pretty, though, when you have the mask on, which is kind of a shame. That's okay. All right, so let's take a look at that. So I like that. Oh, that looks nice. 
So now I'll go in between my frames and just kind of offset it just a tiny bit. And for this, I'll usually slower my camera speed just so that the movements can be much more uh, small. And that's just like adding my like, camera vibrations. So you're doing like small, um, tiny movements in the camera after you blocked in your main big one. Yeah. So you can see this is like my top, uh, my keys here. So now I just go in, in between, and just offset it just a tiny bit and add a keyframe. Come over here, move it just a tiny bit, add a keyframe. Come over here, just a tiny bit. So let's go over here. I'm gonna move this aside so I could actually see what I'm doing. Add a keyframe. It's very pretty. It is pretty. The light bloom works um, pretty well. Like she has a glow, kind of a glow effect. Um, it can get cheesy if you're too heavy handed, but I think it works really well there. Yeah, so let's push this up. So again, I'm, I'm going with a slow uh, camera move. Oh, there she is, so she's, she's not even. So I don't like that, jer there's a jerk there that's not working, right? Oh, like that, it's too far? Yeah. Well, I just don't like that it goes in one direction and then it comes back. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So I found the culprit, so I'll just go in and delete those keys. Thought I found it. I think it's this guy here. All right, let's just get rid of these guys. So let's add a keyframe. You know, it's really not uh, a slow process. It's not a slow process? No, it's not so bad. No. You have a little particles flying around. Did you add particles? Yeah. It looks good. Did you make those particles? Yeah, but they don't show up. No, they're part of the starter pack, but they don't show up clearly nearly as much as I want them to, which is a shame. Uh, dust particles, like... You think about um, what they do when you like uh, when you see them in the movie. Usually, like if you go into like a, a magical place, you'll see like little floating particles, and you're like, "Oh, this is supposed to be pretty." Um, you think about it, it's just like dust. <laughs> it's kind of dirty. So, <laughs> but somehow in, in cinema, it's like um, pretty and magic. Not in Stranger Things. Stranger Things makes it kind of gross. I guess that's true. Um, but they tend to look a little magical like, to me, at least my association. Yeah. So I like the idea of dust particles and the shot looking prettier even though it's messed up. So we have that. Yeah, it's very dust in the air. No, it's actually just dead skin. <laughs> that looks nice. It's going to look crazy once it has some motion blur in there. So, all right, so that's good. So let's save this. All right, so that's, let's call this call a hero character. So that's that camera. Let's take a look at this one again. 
I think it's a nice shot. This one? Yeah, I think all these shots are are good. Yeah, the only problem with this one, camera moves a little weird at the end there. But uh, I don't like that stalactite here. You can see that you could see that it's see through there. Oh, I see. It's just a little problematic. Bit. I but, tried. I, I just don't want to do it right now. Okay. Um, so this one we'll have to come back to. To comment, holy moly, that is chaos. That's good because it should be chaotic. I really like this one. So this is, uh, I want to call this one Koa Hero. I think these shots will will work out easily. Like if I'm seeing like your edit, they look very good. Yeah, I think so too. And then this one is like our. I mean, sometimes like I think for me the sets are or the worst are like all the desert stuff, and, and most of everything is desert. It's like just dirt. <laughs> And like a rock in the background, um, it's hard for me. I don't like don't know what to do with it. And this stuff is so much more interesting. Oh, so you see, we, we do have an issue here with the vines going through that rock. You know, I I kind of think I'll end up shot balling some of this stuff. To you know, when I look at the close ups, they look a little um, relaxed. I don't think it's a big deal to shot ball it. Just to fix the tension. Yeah. Probably easier than kicking it back to animation. It's easier kicking it back to animation. Um, is it going through or is it just kind of bouncing off? Just bouncing off. No, it, it's going on. It's, it's weird. Take a look. Oh, I see. Look right here. You can totally tell. It's like it's inside the rock right there. Okay. Yeah, we'll just fix that like that. It feels like it could be shot modeled pretty easily, though. Like you just I think so. There's, there's other things about the, the vines. They're really kind of um, way, too wavy. Like the, um, the shape of it as they're going down, they just kind of look curly. And because they're kind of curly, they don't have, feel like they have tension. But that's really easy for me to, to adjust. Yeah, the, our rigger, Dominic, he did this really cool thing. You can see that there's like the secondary motion on the ones hanging down. Um, and those are just like dynamic uh, end curves. And it gives this really kick-ass um, additional, additional stuff. Uh, motion. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And we have good animator on this. Um, it's just better if we kind of are, I mean, I have to shot model anyway. I have to shot model the characters because their limbs are messed up. And then I would have to shot model it anyway because um, if the contact points are or the cloth simulation will explode. Yeah. So, so what I'm going to do here, uh, so I'm going to save. So I could use my camera cuts and kind of start making an edit inside of Sequencer, but I hate doing that. So I'm not going to do that at all. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to duplicate this map a few times, not this map, this level. And I think I'm going to duplicate it four times, just one for each camera. So I'll call this fall a wide. This is my wide angle, so that's fine. And then I'll come over here into my sequencer, and I'm going to name, name it wide cam. So that becomes this right here. Great. Okay, let's put this over here. Now I'll go to fall A1, and I'm going to call this fall A1 Koa Hero. Hero is just usually referred to as like, you hear like a hero shot or a hero asset, meaning it's like the close-up. The close-up, that's really what it is. So now we're in the same, uh, it, look, it looks exactly the same, but it's Koa Hero. And I'll just uh, delete the other cameras that I don't need. Let's 
go back to the front and I'll link it to Koa Hero. So we'll have that. Okay, great. Now let's go and do our Ala Hero. So just come over here. Fall A. Delete the cameras that I don't need. Okay, there we go. And let's look at uh, number four. Oh, the other thing I'm going to do here is um, for organization. Oh, crap. Did I close my sequencer? Where the hell did I put my sequencer? like probably right in my face and I don't see it now. There it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna come over here and press this little uh, save the current sequence. And now you can see that when I come over here to my folder, I'll see the thumbnail of it. So I like that a lot. That way I could kind of just look at it from a distance. After a while, you forget what the hell is what. So press that again. You can see now I have all of these here. And this one, let's see which one we want to do. So it's not this one. Uh, this is our secondary Koa cam. It might be that one, but that one's just so similar to the Koa Hero. Uh, Abstract is not going to work here. All a hero is not going to work here. So there's this one. Let's take a look. I kind of like this one. Um, let's just take a look and see. Like this part here. I like that shot. A little rotation to it. I like it. Yeah. I think it's so, nice. So let's call it from above. And I'll set this. Okay. And let's uh, press save so we get the thumbnail and let's call it fall a from above. I'll save these out, save everything. And oh my god. And then I'm gonna just come into these and start setting them up to render. So I have these here. So I just have to get these out of here. So I have a preset. I have a high quality one, and then I have just a quick render one. So for now, I'm just going to set this all to quick render. Um, so fall from above. So let's just do that. So let me just put this in the folder here.
You're going to render these and pop them in the edit. Yeah. And these render settings are just default, so they're fast, right? They're crappy settings, yeah. So I'm not going to get the really pretty motion blur. I will get motion blur, but not the really nice one. How it works better this way. You're not spending like a, a, a nice settings. It takes like a 30 minutes to an hour. And while you're doing that, there's a question. Lighting and grading is so beautiful. Thank you. Are your scenes using Lumen and full ray tracing shadows? Um, I would be very interested in a glance of the post-process volume. You guys are using it possible. Um, I'll show that like later if we have time. But we are using uh, Lumen and full ray tracing. Um, essentially, what we do is light, light it really bright. And then in the post-process, just bring it down. Not, we're not doing too much. Um, maybe messing with the exposure to make it darker and, uh, and the gamma. Mostly, that, that's all it is. It's, I think it's pretty simple. So one thing, I've covered this a bunch of times, but just in case you notice, when um, selecting the folder, some of these shots, I haven't created a shot directory for them. And when I come in here, you can see that I have these things that are copy, copy, copy. And you'll see me like doing this copy and paste again, right? Uh, and let me just rename this so real quick. So fall, fall A, so I know it's that thing. And this is Koa Hero. The point is this, so these are all copies. There's nothing. No file uh, folder. Well, there's files, there's a, but there's a folder structure in there already. That's why I'm copying it and pasting it. They're completely empty, but you can see in here I'll have my renders, my motion capture, my Maya uh, cleanup, ge any geometry that I export from Unreal back to Maya, all my cameras, if I need to export them back to Maya, they would be in here. Any Alembics would be in here. So now everything will be nice and clean. Uh, so this one, I'll put it in render, temp. I'll do version one because these usually go up very high and save everything again because this thing crashes all the freaking time. And I'm going to just set this to one screen. Uh, I'll set my engine scalability settings to low. I'll even turn off the lighting. That way um, it doesn't crash, and it still might crash, but um, yeah, I'll, render, I, I'll render that out now. When I render, I, um, I close my sequencer, and I make that screen really little because my computer will crash if I don't have it unlit and then the screen really tiny. <laughs> so. so you can see the motion blur even at this scale. Wow, look how fast I rendered. Yeah, when you do it low quality, it renders crazy fast. I mean, it's rendering like basically real time, the same performance you're getting. Yeah. Look at that. Really does give you the motion blur. It really changes it. So again, this we're going to have to go back in and fix the animation now that we have the cameras and place. All right, so now we have that. So I'll save this again. Even though I just saved it. It's a risky thing when I have Premiere and uh, Unreal open at the same time, but usually it crashes Unreal if I have Premiere open. Yeah, so Premiere hoping, won't crash. I'm hoping yeah that it'll it'll work. Um, our project files are really astronomical now. So in total, like a, the whole Unreal project takes up like a, a one terabyte. Yeah. And then backing up is very slow because you have to back up the entire project. 
not like parts. <laughs> so I'm just going to go in here, and I have this um, project, or yeah, it is a project, or a sequence, I should say, called R&D, and this is just like my working area. And I just it's constantly filled with things, but I could delete any of it at any point. So, um, oh, not that. So, it's K fall. so let's just start bringing these shots in here. Uh, okay, so, so that's kind of weird. So let's see what, what's going on here. So sequence settings. 24 frames per second, that's all correct. Modify, uh, interpret footage. It's bringing it in at 24. Okay, so I don't know what the hell that was. All right, so we have that, that's good. So let's just bring in the other shots. that in there so you can see they they're all the same length so if I put one on top of another right now they're exactly the same obviously it's the same shot so let's do our Koa hero Or all a hero. So they're basic. You're treating it as if like um, and this was live action, and you manage to record the same performance at multiple angles, yeah. and then you can cut it together. Yeah, exactly. So first, let's start with the wide angle, which is usually even when you're doing live action, when you're filming it, you usually start filming the live action stuff. Uh, sorry, the wide stuff first, and it's usually so. There's many reasons for it. The, the main thing is because you could figure out what the main blocking is of the entire sequence or the entire shot. And also that the actors get to get warmed up because you're not sticking a camera in their face. So we're kind of doing the same thing here. Obviously, these actors don't mind having a camera in their face because they're not real. But um, I still want to kind of approach it the same way. The other thing is, since I know that... Um, going to put this back into the main sequence just for me to kind of see things a little bit better I'm going to bring in this framing that I have here okay and I'll just lock that all right so we're starting with this shot here Probably cut it right there. Move this aside. Then go to Koa Hero. Let me switch the order here. Uh, I think it might work better to go straight to um, Koa ones. See. Then let's go to Ala.
kind of wish the crash zoom started earlier. So I'll probably do that. So we're going to cut right there. Are you cutting on impact? Yeah. And then I might even like jump cut it to her impact. I mean, that's kind of cool. That's really playing with the edit. You know, this is going to take me more than more than five minutes to more figure than out. Five minutes, yeah. <laughs> See this one here. Oh, that's my just my framing. It's kind of weird. I think this sequence is going to be really, um, I'm going to like it. I really like this. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's, so I'm going to start just looking at some stuff here. So I'll go to my effects. I'm going to go to Dehancer. I have a mixed relationship with Dehancer. I know I talked about it very glowing the other day, but uh, they've been very difficult to work with. And they try to make it up to me uh, today, but holy shit, have they been tough. Yeah. Well, basically really bad tech support. Like just... I mean, my God. Like, just the worst tech support I've ever seen in my life. Well, some of the things, too, like, if, if you if you purchase stuff, um, for us, like, for, for almost anyone, any artist that's a freelancer, you, you're purchasing something that you use for work. You want to be able to deduct it, um, and they don't give you receipts or nothing like that. I've never bought anything where there's no receipt. Um, yeah, and they will you'll never get anything or any help. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. I mean, they, like I said, they, they try to make it up to, to me. Today. Yeah, but we've been doing it for months. Yeah. Well, for a while. Yeah. So let's cut right there. I think my thing with software is like if it's easier to steal it, if you're making it easier for people to steal it than to buy it, and then you complain about piracy, you're the one to blame. You know, and I'm not saying that you should pirate stuff, but. Uh, well, what we, we did yeah. was we purchased uh, a license that didn't work. Uh, that should have worked for Adobe. It didn't work. And then. You asked to. Well, there was multiple things. I don't want to get into it yeah, all, but, but it was there was bad. multiple things that it, it was not working. And um, 
their text they it almost seemed like they were just trolling us at a certain point like yeah but then having 10,000 followers on Instagram sure helps speed things up once you blast them <laughs> so uh All right, so let's see what we have here. So I really like that. Yeah, and, and I, I like them, right? I, I think that the, the program is amazing, but... Um, yeah, quick to take, so in comment, quick yeah, to take one's money, hard to get anything really done, yeah. But some places, some... Some places have really great tech support. Um, we're not using V-Ray for this, but I always like V-Ray because you can talk to the people, you can go in the forum, and then the person who like created V-Ray is on the forum, and he replies. Yeah, Lotto's replies to the, literally the guy. Yeah, he replies to the question. Like you, um, having really good support is like huge for why you want to choose to do something. Um, when we have issues with our ultimate fire pack, uh, we we had help right away. And, you know, anytime if I would see like, okay, this person made more stuff, I would totally buy it. Uh, aside from the fact that it looks good, you, know, you can just get response to something when it's not working or, or broken. Yeah, so let's, let's see... Uh... stretching this out. Yeah, thankfully industry doesn't seem to monopolize. There seems to be plenty of competition. That alone would be reason why people would be right. Yeah, V-Ray's amazing support. And Unreal is great too in the sense that there's so much information on it, right? Yeah. So you could see like the crappy motion blur line to that. That's just from um, shitty settings. From the shitty settings, yeah. So that won't be there. So you really have to uh, see past a lot of this stuff at this stage. You could go crazy. Yeah, that's why my renders take like an hour, <laughs> and Miguel's render takes like thirty seconds. All right. So let's take a look at. Uh, That's that one. That's the wide. Oh, it looks like a hard fall. Looks really violent. <laughs> it's right there. Play it, Good play it full screen again, without scrubbing through it. Has a little delay, but it's a. It feels like it really is a hard drop. Um, I think the animation was was very good. Yeah, it and still then, needs a little tweaking, but um. Yeah, but the animation helped. But I think the editing emphasizes that. Yeah, Flato's awesome. Um, but yeah, sorry, Trina, what were you saying? No, I, I think the animation is really good, but the way you cut it makes it look worse. Worse, in the, I hope, in a good way. Well, yes, worse as in that the impact looks, looks like worse <laughs> in a good way. So that right there, this here, we got to get that crash zoom to be a little bit faster. So let's go in there and fix that. So let's just save this. This is where Unreal starts getting a little crazy. So be prepared for crashes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I'm gonna still set it to uh, low quality so you can see it's gonna look really terrible. Oh, I see you brought it like really low. 
Oh yeah. shit, that looks like terrible. <laughs> that basically turn off, turns off Lumen or something, right? That turns off everything. It, it looks like um, my viewport. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rough. I'll, I'll set it a little bit higher because it's kind of hard to see. I actually want to try something else. I want to create a, another camera that I could use to kind of fake, make it a little bit longer. And I'm going to do it on her face. Although I don't know if her face holds up a hundred percent. So for this, I'll go with like a 80 millimeter aperture to one, a very shallow depth of field. So one of the things that you could see that I'm doing is I, I'm trying to zoom in to the point that the focus comes back in. That, that means to me that the focus is in the same distance that it was in in the previous keyframe, right? So right there. That's kind of like the digital equivalent to something that you do when you don't have a budget and you can't afford a focus puller is you, and you're shooting live action, I mean, you would put a, a string on the actor's leg and connect it to the cinematographer. So as a, if the actor's walking or moving, he always maintains that tension in the string because he knows if he pulls past that point, the focus will get lost. And since you don't have a focus pull or somebody changing the focus in real time on a live action shoot again, uh, that everything, um, that the focus will get lost. So you have to maintain that uh, that tension between the string and not let it too loose or too tight or else it'll break. So that's literally like the indie poor man's way of uh, a focus pulling. Let's make sure we have our letterbox back in. Just trying to get that kind of chaos. So you can see some issues there that need to be resolved. I might just uh, break it out of here. And this, I'm going to definitely go in between and just kind of offset it. I want this to feel super chaotic. Let's take a look. So you can see pretty mad madness right there. Uh, let's see where she's at here. So let's find our digital string. Right there. And then down here. It's kind of nice, so let's do that. These type of shots really lend themselves to just looking cool. 
when you can get stuff out of focus like that? Looks very ugly. But I, I don't think I'm gonna use that part, but that looks kind of cool. Yeah, that's a good face. <laughs> if you're falling, you're not gonna you're not gonna have a pretty face. No, she looks like she's <laughs> um it's going to look great once it's moving, but in that one frame, it looks really funny. <laughs> so. yeah. Let's go in here. All right, so let's play it and see. So parts of it work really well. Again, uh, we're just going to use a little fragment of it, and the motion blur is going to do a lot of the job for us there. So that that's my Koa Hero. So remember, this is a new camera. So Koa, I just call this Koa Chaos. Right? Uh, and it's this one here. And let's just call this Chaos Cam. Sorry, this is on the other. Um, Monitor, let me see. Okay, so let's render that out. So low settings. See, I don't have that shot, so here's one of my copies, uh, my blank uh, folder structure. So I call this fall A or fall. Fall A, that's the, the sequence. And then I'll call this Koa Chaos Renders. And I'll make version one. Save all. Um, Koa Hero, I want to re render that as well. Uh, Koa Hero, though, I'm going to do version two. That's so fast for for rendering. Yeah, let's see. Uh, any comments? No one falls pretty. Yeah, <laughs> no one falls pretty. All right, so there they go. So we'll minimize this guy. Open up. Good old Premiere. So that's my Koa Hero shot. So I'll just go to Reveal and Project, Replace Footage. Version 2. That should update it. So let's pull this back a little bit. So I want to do it right there. I'll cut right there. Let's bring in our Koa Chaos shot.
This one, we're just going to use a tiny fragment of it. See, it looks insane. <laughs> Those facial expressions work. Just looks kind of weird, the last frame, but that's not going to be in there. <laughs> that that impact looks harsh. Can you do a uh, how long would it take to render it? So let's get the um, color to match. So I'll just grab my T-Hancer. Let's also grab our film grain. in there. Let's get some music in there. So I don't have the music for this exactly, but um, I have one here. Just drag that in there. Uh, it's cool. I like the drum beats. <laughs> it works really well with the fall. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, there we go. We put a shot together. You have to picture the father screaming as as the daughter falls into the hole. Back in. Does he see it? Of course, he sees them fall. He doesn't see that. He doesn't see this shot here, but he sees them from a distance. Right. So we can now go in and get. Uh, let's go to audio. Voice over the father. Which one? 
Can you just tell by looking at like the the waves? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> at the names. But here, the names are really long, so I'm just uh, clicking through some. Miguel can sight read audio waves. <laughs> well, I could on I, yeah, I could on he, some actually. He is actually doing that. That's why I'm asking him. <laughs> Um, so our language is, is in Swahili, which neither of us understand any of it. Uh, so he just understands it phonetically, right? Like how it sounds. And then I think that's where he, he learned how to just start to start doing that by looking at the wave. Uh, Gotta put this on another monitor so I can see the full names. Yeah, it probably is taking him longer because uh, streaming live and then you're searching through your files, you're just like, oh, I don't know. I feel more stressed out and it takes longer. Oh, for sure. Let me just open this. But I feel pretty happy seeing, seeing that shot. Um, it's only, you know, it's looking pretty good as uh, your first rough. Yeah. All the shots I have, the biggest problem lighting are all the exterior desert stuff, which is like most of everything. <laughs> and I just have such a hard time with it. Right, here it is. Yeah. Wait, um... Mm -hmm. Allah! 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 I'll just grab that. This is, might not be the take that I end up using, but um, for now, let's just go with it. <laughs> so I'll mark the in point and the out point. that in there then I could go to like essential sounds here and just go to dialogue set this to make distant uh, let's see what would be good here large reflective room <laughs> Uh, let's instead of going to make this and let's put it on in a, in a large room. Church. Just so the voice sounds further. <gasps> Allah! 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 Lower the volume. And then... already here. The uh, father screaming in the background because we're fucked up. <laughs> Put that right there. It's actually started over. What's sad is this, this audio clip, he doesn't even call the, um, the main daughter. So the main daughter, the main character is Koa, 
And then the other one's Allah. Yeah, that's intention, of course. Here we go, kids. We're on our way to, mur to murdering the two girls. So. Yeah, it just goes really, really messed up from here. So that's the process. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and so yeah. That, yeah. Anybody that's... have any questions for Tran or I before we log out? You have two seconds to type really fast. Um, oh, this Thanks. is nice. Thank you. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, I appreciate that. We definitely appreciate it. Even if you uh, are watching this like later on, leave a comment so we know you guys like what we're doing. And uh, yeah, I think at the end, this thing is going to be pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Yeah, the Thank sound you. design is going to be a, a big part of it. Um, you know, that's one of my favorite parts. I. I wish we had more time to do this because I would probably just try to do the sound design myself. But like, I really enjoy um, putting sounds together. Sound to, makes uh, a huge difference. Make it all work, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. And that's another thing that we need to get is the sounds of the of the uh, ropes snapping and stuff like that. Let me just see something real quick. But if I can find one, I'll do it. I just want to see. I'm just going to go on on a motion array, which again, we're not sponsored by these guys at all, but I just want to see if they, they have any kind of um, sounds that we could start using. Um, yeah, that's this is gonna take a while. So yeah, yeah, I think it's we're past the time. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the reverb thing is amazing. This essential sound stuff is is really great. So play around with it. It's it's there. It's pretty good. You could do it for uh, the dialogue or sound effects or music or whatever. Does Da Vinci have stuff like that too? Yeah, Da Vinci has a built-in sound thing. Uh, so it's, really it's a good. total competitor to um, oh, yeah. Premiere, huh? Da Vinci used to cost like $100,000. So yeah. you used to have to buy a like a proprietary machine to run it. So Da Vinci is no joke. Premiere was made for, from the beginning for, you know, more amateur. But Da Vinci uh, started well, as like, a color correction tool, but then they yeah, decided that's to what, try to become edit, an editor. Too. That's what I remember is like, oh, it color corrects really well. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. The thing is, if you do color, you may as well edit because there's really not much to it. It's like well, you have to load like Lego in blocks. You have to load in a bunch of shots, so yeah. But it's just referencing them. They're not ever in the project. No, what I mean is, if they are set up for that, might as well turn oh, yeah, it yeah, yeah, into yeah. an editor. I see. Yeah. 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 Cool. But yeah, play around with this thing. There's a lot of cool stuff. Like, let me just show you this real quick. Like, if you use the essential sound, like you can see here, it sounds like. Um, do this one it sounds like he's screaming into a cave Allah! Allah! right but we could grab that same thing and just get rid of all the uh, effects that it loads up so you can see now we're back to the original one Allah! Allah! which is how you want to record it you want to record it what's called dry which is uh, in a very um, I was going to say in a dry room, in a sound room. 
with no uh, echo at all, very flat. That yeah. way you could add all that stuff in there. But you can see I could grab this now and go to um, come over here and go to dialogue again. And we could make it uh, from a telephone, from a radio, uh, on an intercom. So you can see now it's going to sound like he's calling from an intercom. Hello! Hello! Right? And you can, uh, if you don't like the intercom thing, you can... Uh, you can also adjust all that stuff too, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, you could change everything here, but you can come over here and set this to... Um, let me see, like in a small room while you're locked in the trunk. Uh, and we could locked stick in the trunk is a, is a preset. Hello! 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 Yeah, he That's, sounds like he's locked up somewhere. He's stuck in a trunk. Um, it sounds like... It's a lot of fun. It changes the meaning behind it. Yeah. Also, now he's trapped. But the one that we did, we just went to um, dialogue, so it was in a large room. Uh, we're gonna boost the male voice and then we're gonna make it in a church so it's got a lot of uh, reverb Allah! Allah! we could increase the reverb here so make it even more uh reflective Allah! 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 i don't like to set the second Allah, but yeah you get it it's pretty cool Allah! Yeah. Add this on top. Oh, right here. So pretty awesome. Cool. All right, guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank you in. for Thanks tuning to, in and yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. participating in the chat. We always appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Noman and Alex for making this possible. And we'll see you guys. Next week. Later. See ya. Oh, wait, I have to press this video. Yes. I have to turn that on. Where is it? There it is. There it is. All right, see you guys.